Wow, history is my love. As a matter of fact, it's my avocation. Much of the concept of this library was built as it is because of my love for history. You see, if you don't know your history, then you are like a big tree without roots. Not only are you not strong, you have no idea of how long you will blossom and grow. Where were you born, Philip? Dr. Walter Smith was born in Tampa, Florida and grew up in three different places. Cairo, Georgia, Tallahassee, Florida, and Harlem, New York. He learned the principles of hard work from his grandma, Susie, and at the age of seven, he took on the mentality to never be poor. Dr. Walter Smith has lived a very exciting life, which includes serving in the U.S. Army during the Korean War. After leaving the Army, he enrolled in Gibbs Junior College, where he became the first president of the Student Government Association. At the age of 23, while studying at Gibbs College, he became the first African-American manager of a 7-Eleven food store within his entire region. In 1993, he became the founding president of South Africa's first American-style two-year college. Dr. Walter Smith has traveled worldwide teaching educators how to prepare their curriculum for their institutions and how to create successful colleges and universities. Over time, Dr. Smith has received countless awards and accolades. Possibly his most distinguished accomplishment is becoming the seventh president of Florida A&M University in 1977. Yeah, no disrespect to you. You know, I'm feeling you and all you cool, but how does someone like you get to present such a prestigious award to Reverend C.K. Steele? I mean, well, you see, you don't have to walk around with your chest stuck out because you've accomplished things. At that time, I happened to have been president of Florida a and University. You, you used to be president, family? Yes, I used to be president. I don't feel that I need to walk around with my chest stuck out and yell to the highest heel. I'm the seventh president of Florida a and University. In 2002, he opened the Dr. Walter L. Smith Library, where he continues to influence the lives of young people in his community. Now retired, he lives with his wife Barbara, and they have five children, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren together. What a life I've had. From a high school dropout, to a university president, to an international scholar, to a first black technology instructor at the Kennedy Space Center in the 60s, wow. You gotta share that with somebody. From Rattlers near and far, tonight we honor the legacy of Dr. Walter L. Smith. There was a photograph on that screen that touches me every time I see her picture. And that's the photograph of me with my mother. A lot of you know the name Eva Reynolds. When I worked in the garment district in New York City, after I had run away, after a racial conflict in Georgia, I came back home on vacation, I said, and I was gonna go back to New York. And my mother said to me, baby, I want you to go over yonder, over to Gandy Bridge and see this new school they call a junior college that they don't open over there. And I want you to go over and see what you can study. And then I want you to go back to New York and come back and be somebody. Well, I disputed my mother and I told her a junior college wasn't there. I said, that's Gibbs High School. And she put her hands on her hip and she said, don't you speak my word. <laughs> she said, you get out of here in this car and drive over the Gandhi Bridge and see what it teaches. And we drove that 1955 Chevrolet, which I still own. <laughs> I met John W. Rembert, the principal of Gibbs High School and the president of the New Junior College. Well, I came back across the Gandhi Bridge and got the bus to New York and did what my mama said I had to do. In 1958, after I had studied hard to get my GED, you know, I was a high school graduate, I mean, 
was not a high school graduate. And I came back to Gibbs Junior College and my life started all over again. I don't like to talk about success without talking about that because that's what laid the foundation for many things that I did then and that I do now. Don't forget mama. <laughs> Next week is Mother's Day. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget that. The 13th of May, Mother's Day. And I'm going to shut up when I tell you this. <laughs> if God is good to me, as he has been, on that 13th day, Mother's Day, the second Sunday in May, I will turn 83 years old. Wow. And I have a lot to be thankful for for the things that have happened in my life. My mother, my wife, my grandmother, and others. I thank all of you for being here today and those of you who got tickets because I asked you. And most of all, thank you, Pamela, Donald, and you know what? Her name probably won't be called, but there's a lady who runs the Bank of America. Ms. Johnson. Yes. She persuaded me to consider selling tickets and being here today. Thank you too, Ms. Johnson. Thank you so much for this occasion.